Welcome everybody to this uh, last lecture of this course which is about uh, microstrip antenna this lecture will be like different style because what is required from you is to like generally understand how the uh, microstrip antennas is handled in terms of like how it is analyzed how it is matched how it is fabricated how it is modeled so on so forth without going into like the mathematical details so my explanation for this topic will be sort of like um, qualitative and uh, i will try to like guide you uh, through this uh, slide to get familiar with the topic and be able to read uh, the different topics covered in this presentation so that you have like a, a solid uh, background or a solid um, information to go further if you wanted uh, in the future uh, into this topic of microstrip antenna we start by uh, the definition of microstrip antenna which is a metallic strip uh, or patch mounted on a dielectric layer I think everybody knows what is a microstrip antenna it's something like the one shown here where we have like a metallic structure on the surface like microstrip uh, structure substrate and ground and this is sort of like the simplest uh, shape or format or configuration for a microstrip the microstrip can take many different shapes as shown here the microstrip does have advantages that you can like read by your own uh, like low profile versatile that means the flexibility in like the design for certain resonant frequency polarization pattern impedance so on so forth it has some disadvantages like main one is low power and the other one is large size uh, i don't think this is a big uh, problem because like any antenna at low frequency would be a, a large size but like we can have like a very small like uh, dipole antenna in large size in uh, vhf it would be like reasonable size but the microstrip wouldn't be so anyway so you read about this you you know like the advantages and disadvantages and like here are like the most common ways on uh, how to feed uh, like microstrip antennas as we're gonna show them one by one so microstrip feeding line you have like a microstrip transmission line on the top you use it to feed uh, the microstrip structure so this transmission line or microstrip line is referencing to the uh, ground layer similar to the batch and like some information about this feeding mechanism and its features and characteristic another uh, coaxial uh, another feeding methodology is a coaxial feed where you have like a sort of like a via or a probe that's going from the bottom side to feed the microstrip antenna those are like the features and characteristics of this kind of feed another feeding mechanism is uh, aperture coupled uh, feed so in this case we have sort of like an, an aperture we have like three metallic layer uh, like the middle one is a ground layer with some aperture the bottom one is a layer where we have like sort of like a transmission line so the transmission line carries the signal then there is an aperture in the middle uh, layer the aperture in the middle layer is coupling the field from this uh, microstrip on the bottom to the patch on the top so we have like patch on the top then a reference plane in the middle with some aperture and at the bottom we have just a microstrip line that is carrying the signal the signal is coupled from the line through the, up the aperture to the patch again like similar uh, information like information and summary of like the features of this kind of coupling the last 
type of coupling is through proximity coupling where we have like the batch on layer metal layer one the feed is on metal layer two which has nothing but the feeding line and we have like a common reference at the bottom and this is the proximity uh, coupled feed for the micro strip again the features and characteristic of this kind of feed is summarized here and as you can see i'm just trying to like lead you through uh, the topic without giving too much details my uh, target or our objective from this topic is to have like a general understanding uh, and knowledge base about microstrip antenna how it is fed how it is uh, matched how it is analyzed so on so forth so in terms of like method of analysis we have transmission line method we will cover this in a little bit of details cavity model will also like touch on this and in general we have numerical methods which can like have many different kind of uh, numerical techniques for solving uh, for the radiation from a microstrip so the first one transmission line uh, model method this is the simplest it has physical insight so you can understand and see how things are interacting uh, inside but it is not that accurate so it's a uh, very good for hand calculation or like getting a general feeling for what is going on cavity model is a little bit more complex a little bit more uh, accurate and it has some physical insight so like numerical methods they are more complex but they are very accurate and very versatile it has many different uh, possibilities and many different ways to be able to solve because it's numerical methods when you go for numerical numerical methods you gain accuracy and you lose physical insight because you're solving like equations you don't have much uh, like during solving you don't understand much what is going on but once you get the results you can see the field and you can start to explain and get some like information about the physical behavior of the electromagnetic waves in the problem so the transmission line method this is the simplest and as i said it's giving some physical insight or like it has good like physical insight about what is going on uh, for the microstrip to radiate so this method like depends on finding the field under the batch the field between the batch and the reference ground and we do this based on transmission line uh, model then we use this model to calculate the field underneath the microstrip we use this field to calculate the radiation from the illuminated uh, slots as we're gonna see shortly so we have like the width of the transmission line and we have the length of the transmission line under the transmission line there will be field and this field is uh, because this is a micro strip it is like part of it is in air part of it is uh, in the dielectric layer as we discussed this in transmission line uh, lectures in microwave engineering course there is some fringing in air and we can like model this uh, cross section as like here we have air and we have dielectric material we can assume like we have an equivalent uh, model where we have dielectric material everywhere but the dielectric constant would be uh, epsilon uh, equivalent epsilon r equivalent so or x uh, epsilon r effective effective dielectric constant so this is the reality we have air we have dielectric material the equivalent model is that we have everything is epsilon r effective effective dielectric uh, constant of course the effective dielectric constant will be somewhere between air one epsilon r is between epsilon r air which is one and epsilon r dielectric material this is the value for uh, epsilon uh, effective there is some formulas to calculate this 
again like moving more with form like formulas for calculating the uh, effective dielectric constant at low frequency effective dielectric constant is uh, almost flat or constant this is frequency this is uh, epsilon effective at intermediate frequency like around 10 gigahertz it's going uh, like increasing with frequency and when we go for very high frequency it's sort of like reaching the epsilon relative of the dielectric material so at very high frequency most of the field will be confined to the dielectric material and the effective dielectric constant would approach or asymptotically uh, converge to epsilon r of the dielectric material so why are we interested in this because this epsilon effective is like affecting the behavior so the microstrip line is working like this we have the length the length is about lambda by two this slot and this slot both of them or like this part of the transmission uh, line or the microstrip and that part are the radiating slots and this is where like we get radiation from the separation between them for the microstrip to resonate is for this lens to be lambda by two uh, of the resonance frequency but because we have some fringing effect the electric field at this part and at this edge they are extending outside the metallic part so the effective length of the microstrip is tending to be uh, longer so in order for the microstrip to resonate at certain frequency we need the effective length to be lambda by two which means that the, the L effective equal lambda by two not the physical length so this way the physical length for the microstrip is less than uh, lambda by two so this is what this slide is uh, saying and this is why we are interested in epsilon effective epsilon effective is like responsible for the extra length that is happening so the effective length of the microstrip is larger than its physical length for the microstrip to resonate at lambda by two the physical length need to be less than lambda by two and this factor is q and this q is like between uh, 0.47 instead of 0.5 and board, uh, 0.49 and there is some discussion and description about how this is happening how to find it and so on and so forth so you can read uh, on your own and get a feeling for uh, this uh, idea uh, like so slit, uh, slot admittance so each radiating aperture is modeled as a narrow slot of width w this is the width of the microstrip uh, height h which is the separation between the metallic uh, structure of the batch and the reference ground plane so we have radiation from here we have a radiation from here if we model this it will be some sort of uh, like this uh, like model each section here does have some in, uh, inductance or admittance and some um, like capacitive loading so we have like uh, this is sort of like the radiation resistance from uh, this slot the radiation resistance from this slot and the capacitive uh, effect between the microstrip and the reference ground plane and here like this part of the uh, slides are talking about the models and we are saying that uh, the voltage across the center of the slot is v naught we can define a conductance such as that when placed across the center of the slot it will dissipate the same amount of power so we have like the uh, impedance sorry radiation resistance here we're talking about uh, radiation conductance so g1 is the radiation conductance which is the equivalent inductance that when bought across the slot it will it would dissipate the same amount 
uh, of power that is equal to the radiated power so this is where we get it from b radiated equal uh, half conductance over v square so it's very similar to the concept of radiation resistance but here we're talking about radiation conductance and we find it the same way we know v naught the uh, voltage across the center of the slot we have the power radiated from the slot we can calculate the uh, inductance and like the slight reduction from lambda dielectric by two is necessary to account for fringing so this is what we were talking about l physical l is a little bit less than lambda by two when this is happening the transformed admittance of slot two would have like this effect so when we have like this like length we'll have uh, y2 does have the like negative uh, and here this is the transferred this is the transformed admittance so the admittance of two at one why because at one this is where the loading is so this is the source so in order to we have like similar to what we did with matching we have impedance one y1 admittance at this point then we have y2 admittance at this point in order to calculate like the total loading we can transform this back to here so we have the total admittance at slot number one when we choose the distance between the two slots to be slightly less than lambda by two we have like this relationship b2 and b1 would equal and opposite sign b2 is transformed to the position of b1 and they cancel out and we have just uh, like pure real uh, admittance or uh, conductance so we get rid of the uh, reactive part of the input impedance or the radiation impedance or the radiation uh, admittance so here's some relations around this and here we're talking about sometimes we have um, into consideration the coupling uh, effect between like slot one and slot two so here i continue with the mathematical derivation now we're coming to uh, another important topic related to uh, batch antenna which is the matching technique so matching techniques we have a number of methods we will have a resist microstrip uh, project so that you will uh, practice this more but in general we have like different kind of uh, like impedance matching methodology we can use uh, impedance transformer the lambda by four impedance transformer so that we can like whatever our feed is we can transform this to the input impedance of the microstrip we can use the resist uh, microstrip uh, line feed we can have this coupled very similar but to this one but it is not connected it is coupled not uh, connected and of course you, know, you might find like more different methods for uh, impedance matching but those are like very famous and uh, common ways to do impedance matching between the feeding line and the microstrip so here we come to the second method for modeling the microstrip antennas which is the cavity model in this uh, modeling method we like model the microstrip uh, on top of a reference ground plane as a cavity we like studied the cavity in microwave engineering before and from the cavity model we can find the electric and magnetic field underneath the microstrip and from this model we can, the fields at the edges or the boundary of the microstrip we can then use like this field as radiation from 
aperture and use this data to find the modeling model for uh, or like modeling uh, sorry the radiated field from the micro strip so when we have like a micro strip on top of a reference ground plane there will be like some voltage distribution on the top and this voltage distribution on the top will attract the opposite uh, charges at the bottom so for example if this part is negative with respect to ground it will have negative charge here positive charge here when this side is positive it will attract negative charge and of course this is ac signal so the charges are oscillating according to the frequency of the feed so there is like attraction between the top and bottom charges but those charges here those charges at the top they are in this side they are of the same uh, polarity so they will have some repulsive uh, force and this repulsive force might push some charges to go to the upper surface of the microstrip and this is called or will be like causing something uh, like a surface current on the top that is have the density of j top we have j bottom this is the main like current distribution or the main uh, surface current at the bottom of the micro strip and there is a minor uh, top current density on the top of the micro strip and this top micro strip uh, current can be neglected if epsilon r is large and if h is small so the more coupling between the micro strip and the ground plane the more tight the distance and the stronger the coupling between charges on the bottom of the microstrip metal and the reference plane and the more negligible the top surface current will be so this is uh, like the kind of uh, information that I, I said is here like written in words it's good for you to read and understand this so when we like model the micro strip antenna as uh, a cavity we'll have some charge sorry some field distribution underneath of uh, the micro strip the field distribution ideally looks like this but practically we have some uh, fringing effect and this fringing effect is responsible to the increase of the effective length beyond the physical length and this is why we choose the physical length to be slightly less than lambda by two so that the effective length is lambda by two which is the required uh, condition for the micro strip to resonate at certain frequency so in this um, like modeling method we model the volume under the batch as a rectangular cavity loaded with loaded with means filled with dielectric material with uh, dielectric constant epsilon r and then we use like what we learned from uh, like finding the radiation from like aperture either directly from the electric current density or the magnetic current density to find e and h or we do this through the auxiliary potential function and in this case we might have like multiple modes this is the simplest mode where we have like the radiated field uh, uh, electric field is like uniform with respect to this direction and of course it is changing like this so we have like a maximum here a maximum here so the field distribution underneath the patch does have this uh, structure and with different modes we have like different structure we might have like this one so it's very similar to this one but here like this is the radiating edges not uh, here the radiation radiating edges or radiating slots are this side and that side here 
the radiation is from that side and that side uh, like higher order modes we might have like different shapes so on and so forth anyway but in all cases we use the uh, cavity model to find the field underneath of the batch and what is radiating what is coupling the field to outside and causing radiation is the illum illumination of those fires four sides so those four sides now is actually like aperture antenna illuminated with certain field distribution and this field distribution on those like four apertures is what we use to uh, model the radiation or to find the radiation from the microstrip so this is like radiation from aperture we have surface current on the four uh, slots here and so we can find js from h tangential we can find ms from uh, e tangential and we use this to find the radiation of course like here we can like find that js will be zero and because with this structure the uh, surface sorry the tangential component is electric and the magnetic tangential component is negligible so that you will not find much of a, a surface electric current on those slots and the top surface uh, current as i said is negligible especially when the edge the, the height of the batch above the ground plane is small so the coupling is strong and the surface current on top is uh, negligible so we can use like aperture uh, like like techniques to find the radiation from the four uh, sides and in this case we can like use the equivalent theorem where we use like a conducting uh, media inside medium one and the boundary condition in this case will be doubled so the remaining part is sort of like doing the formulation for this and just showing like how we apply the equivalence theorem and uh, how we take the ground plane effect into consideration it's a direct application of the image theory we have m2 uh, on this slot and this slot and we have a dielectric sorry a conducting reference plane so it doubles the uh, magnetic field and that's why we have this like two because we take the uh, ground plane effect into consideration so the remaining is sort of like mathematical uh, clarification on how this is uh, happening and how to find uh, or like how the radiation pattern looks like and so on and so forth i would like just like stop after this part and the remaining or like more learning will be uh, like gained from the assignments that will be given to you regarding this topic good luck and thank you